MLW filed a 19-page antitrust lawsuit against World Wrestling Entertainment on Tuesday, alleging intentional interference with contractual relations, intentional interference with prospective economic relations, and a violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act, among other things. WWE has yet to officially be served with the lawsuit. Uh, Once that happens, they will have three weeks to respond to the allegations. Per PW Insider, MLW states that they are filing the lawsuit because of the, quote, egregious efforts of professional wrestling company WWE to destroy its competitor MLW's business and maintain its dominance of the U.S. broadcasting market for professional wrestling by unlawfully interfering with MLW's access to media markets and wrestling talent. And the suit claims that Since purchasing WCW in 2001, WWE has maintained control of 85% of the professional wrestling sphere, alleging that it is maintaining its dominance through unfair and anti-competitive business practices, including poaching talent, misappropriating confidential information, interfering with competitors' contracts, and cutting off competitors' access to their viewing audiences. And it also states that with WWE's popularity declining over the past five years due to, among other things, inferior content. I laughed out loud when I read that. It's funny because it's true. They allege the company has targeted MLW with unlawful predatory conduct, including airing without authority MLW wrestling footage, inducing MLW wrestlers under exclusive contracts with MLW to terminate those contracts and encouraging MLW wrestlers to breach their contracts with the company by disclosing MLW's confidential and proprietary business information. Uh, Here's some more color, not just from PW Insider, but this, uh, this also comes from this week's Observer on the core claims. These are the most important points. Of the law, so I ain't reading all 19 pages here, but this is kind of what it boils down to here. WWE, according to MLW, interfered with their broadcasting agreement with Vice TV. MLW and Vice reached an agreement last May for MLW to air archived footage, and they were also negotiating to expand the agreement to include airing new content as well. The claim is that Susan Levison, a senior vice president at WWE, called Vice executives to tell them that Vince McMahon was pissed that Vice was airing MLW content and wanted Vice to stop doing so. And the lawsuit claims that the Vice executive told Levison, I think this is illegal what you're doing, and claimed the executive told Levison that this was probably an antitrust violation, to which Levison responded that she cannot control McMahon. And the claim is that WWE had considerable leverage on Vice because wrestling was an important part of their programming. Now, obviously, Dark Side of the Ring is their big, I don't even know if I can say moneymaker, but it's their big wrestling show. And uh, we still don't know, by the way, if that's been greenlit for a uh, fourth season. And Vice needed WWE, the dominant company, to ensure the success of Dark Side of the Ring. The suit claims WWE's interference caused Vice to pull out of all negotiations and only one MLW show aired. Vice's idea was a one-hour wrestling show after Dark Side of the Ring as a way to keep the high number of viewers from that show for another hour. The station was hoping to retain half of those viewers with the new MLW show. However, viewership of the first MLW show on October 7th was about 40,000 total. And Vice then never aired another episode. They mention in the suit, uh, MLW does, that A&E, uh, which aired those WWE documentary specials last year and the uh, Most Wanted Treasure show with uh, Top Dollar, they mention that uh, A&E owns 40% of Vice. The implication being that that ownership stake may have led to pressure not to carry MLW had... WWE requested that they not carry MLW. There's also the claim that the network needs to be on WWE's good side for for Dark Side of the Ring. That makes very little sense to me. When you consider the fact that Public Enemy number 1 in most of those Dark Side of the Ring episodes has been Vince McMahon and WWE. In fact, I, I would always get messages. Oh, this show is such a hit job on WWE. All it does is bash Vince McMahon. 
And it, it, I mean, there are episodes that have nothing to do with WWE, but yeah, a lot of them, they don't paint Vince McMahon in WWE in a very kind light. I mean, that is true. Not because I think they're making shit up, but because <laughs> this is how the story goes. And these are things that Vince McMahon and WWE have done and said in the past. But the fact that, again, they're painted in such a, a poor light on most of those episodes. Nor does WWE clearly give them permission to use any of their footage. You know, that's something Vice does on its own. Uh, you can tell because the quality and the way, you know, the footage they use is not uh, great. But because it's a documentary, I think they can get away with, with using it. But it's not as if WWE is providing them with, uh, you know, HD footage for them to use. So I, I'm skeptical of that. Now, they did get Jerry McDevitt, WWE's lawyer, to be interviewed for the steroid trial episode. But the idea that Vice needs to play nice with WWE because of Dark Side of the Ring is comical, considering how they're portrayed. Uh, another claim is that last July, MLW entered into a lucrative agreement with Tubi, a California-based streaming service owned by Fox. Uh, 2B TV, I have that app, in fact, on my uh, Roku. The agreement would have had a profound impact on MLW's business by giving it exposure to Fox's broad television and NFL audience, further positioning them for future media deals. When WWE found out about the agreement, they contacted a 2B executive located in their headquarters in San Francisco and threatened that if 2B did not terminate the MLW contract, WWE would cease doing business with Fox and would pull important WWE programs from Fox platform. Now, let me stop there. Maybe that threat was made, but the idea that WWE has a billion-dollar agreement over, I think it's a five-year period, for SmackDown, right, with Fox. But if they dare air MLW programming, on one of their streaming services, the WWE is going to pull the plug. It reminds me of all those years ago when Vince McMahon, this is the early years of WrestleMania, right? This, I think this was 88 probably, WrestleMania 4. And Vince McMahon is making, is writing letters to and making all these threats to the cable carriers that if you carry this NWA show, you're going to lose WrestleMania. Was Vince McMahon actually going to pull WrestleMania from all of these different cable services and slice you know, the amount of money that he was going to make? Of course not. But that was the threat, and it was actually very effective. So we, we've seen examples of this before. The idea that WWE would somehow harm or sacrifice a billion-dollar deal with Fox and, and withhold programming or terminate the deal if they were to get in bed with MLW on their streaming platform, again, it's just comical. But MLW uh, contends. That soon thereafter, and just before MLW content was to begin airing on Tubi, the MLW contract was terminated, resulting in substantial losses to uh, MLW and harm to customers. They said the deal would make them more attractive to signing new talent, and they had new shows like this Azteca Underground thing, and they had hired a bunch of new you know, editors and a new PR agency. I mean, MLW was really getting ready to make big moves with this Tubi deal. And then there was going to be a public announcement on August 10th, a September 11th launch. The claim is that on or about August 9th, the night before the press release was to go out, Stephanie McMahon talked to a 2B executive in California about the deal. The claim is that she first talked about moving MLW off the agreed-upon Tuesday night at 8 p.m. slot because it was the same time as NXT. And the quote here is, But Ms. McMahon ultimately pressured the 2B executive and other senior executives at Fox to terminate the agreement in its entirety. 2B's affiliate, Fox, could lose WWE's business or preferred content if 2B did not acquiesce to their demand and terminate its agreement with MLW. On August 9th, the night before a planned press release about the 2B deal was to go out, as a result of WWE's pressure and interference, MLW received a letter purporting to terminate the license agreement. And then there's a bunch of other things here that are alleged as well about, you know, tampering in terms of talent contracts. There was a, a Fight TV deal. Allegedly, they had approached MLW with a media rights deal. 
and MLW started to uh, you know talk to them, but Fight pulled out of those talks. And MLW claims that Fight's executive advisor of corporate development was at the same time working for WWE as a senior vice president. And the lawsuit claims the WWE's interference in the uh, Tubi agreement reversed momentum that the company had uh, at the time with fans. And that it cut off their access to a broader fan base and it resulted in you know, a 40% drop in ticket sales within a matter of weeks. And it just led MLW down a very bad road. The 2B deal falling through because of WWE, I absolutely believe. Because even I can remember, Court Bauer was teasing around that time last summer a major announcement that was going to be transformative for their company. And then that announcement never came. And now we know that at least some members of the media had the press release in hand. They had it sent to them in advance you know, from MLW for release the next morning, but they were never given the green light to go ahead and publish it. That's called an embargo. I've written hundreds of press releases in my life as a uh, PR practitioner, it's common practice to distribute it to at least some media members in advance of whatever it is that you're announcing. It could be an event, it could be a new product launch, whatever it is. Um, you, You give them the release in advance with the understanding that it's under embargo and it's not to be published until a specific date and time. So let's say it's, you know, two days from now at 9 a.m., It's written usually in red ink at the top of the press release. This is not to go out. This is embargoed until whatever date, 9 a.m. And that way, everybody reports it all at once. That's that's standard practice. It sounds like that's probably what happened here, only that embargo was never lifted because the deal fell through. For for whatever the reason, the deal fell through. Uh, Per The Observer, there was industry talk that WWE and Fox were not on the best of terms at one point, so much so that Fox, through Tubi, was ready to make a non-WWE wrestling deal, which would have been MLW. And then certain moves were made, including Brock Lesnar going to SmackDown. There was a SmackDown show that got moved to the Staples Center, uh, which is where Fox is located in Los Angeles. Uh, WWE officials outright said... That was done for Fox, so that Fox could get a SmackDown show in its home city. That all took place around the same time frame of Tubi pulling out of its deal with MLW. Now, Jerry McDevitt gave a quote, the uh, one and only, the infamous Jerry McDevitt. He said, I have not seen the full lawsuit since WWE has not yet been served. If Tubi breached, then sue Tubi. As to Vice, WWE has no commercial relationship with them, or for that matter, any of the other dozens of content distribution entities with whom MLW could do a deal with if they had a commercially viable product. They put a show on Vice, if my memory serves me correctly, after one of the Dark Side shows, and lost most of its audience. I think I read that they got 40,000 viewers. No wonder Vice did no further deal. A very McDevitt-esque statement. So that is WWE's position at this point. You know, WWE making moves to hurt other promotions is hardly a new phenomenon. They've done that for decades, long before they were publicly traded. They still do it today. The Pizzagate stuff after the Chris Jericho Nick Gage match where they were allegedly shopping stories around to media people to see who would bite on it to try to make AEW look bad. You know, keeping other promotions from running specific buildings. They tried to screw Ring of Honor out of their Madison Square Garden booking a few years ago for the big uh, super card with New Japan. That was WrestleMania weekend. So I can believe that they screwed with or tried to screw with MLW in some way because they have a history of it. Even with companies that you would look at and think they're no great threat to WWE. So why would they care? Why would they care about MLW? But they do it anyway. Because they can. Because they want the market to themselves. And if anybody starts to gain any kind of traction, any kind of foothold, no matter how small, they have to try to squash it. You know, even if publicly they claim, oh, our product is different from what these wrestling companies do. We don't just do wrestling. And we don't see them as competition. Of course they do. We know they do. They're part of the same carny industry that all these other promotions are part of. It's just that they're a lot bigger and they have more resources at their disposal. They have more money. Which is why it's so hard to beat them in court. 
you know, MLW is asking for a jury trial. They're asking for damages to be determined at the time of said trial. I doubt this ever even goes to trial. And MLW is taking a real risk here because there's no doubt that their business has taken a hit. You know, is it because of WWE, as they allege? Is it because the, the pandemic stifled whatever momentum they were building? Or is it because people just lost interest in the MLW product? You know, if they're hurting for cash and they fight this and they lose, they stand to take a huge hit. Because if there's one thing WWE has, lots of, it's money. So I would think they're hoping for a settlement long before this ever gets to a, a jury trial. And if the 2B TV stuff can be proven, and that's the thing, like I hear about this Vice stuff, like can it be proven? If the 2B stuff can be proven, then maybe they could get a little something out of that because I do think they got a raw deal on that. But otherwise, I think it's unlikely that this goes anywhere.